What I'm going to go through in this video is uh, how we can use Enterprise PDM to manage different kinds of processes other than life cycle management or project management. Um, in this case here, we're going to manage the process of doing a 3D print job. And uh, if we just go into that folder, we see here that we have some some jobs that were already submitted. We had these these pieces here that were converted into an STL automatically um, using EPDM and then you can see here we have a workflow uh, state for some of these files like this one was cancelled we have some others that were submitted already for 3D print so I'm just going to demonstrate how this works and I have this toolvice folder here with a locking handle in it and you can see here it has some data on the card it has a part number a description uh, and some additional information you'll also see we're capturing the volume of the part so that was calculated inside of SOLIDWORKS, assigned to a variable, and then it's brought into EPDM automatically. So here, to kick this off, I'm going to run my print 3D model task. I'm going to get some instructions on what I need to do. I'm not going to read through these things right now, but we're just going to let this execute at this point. And what the task is going to do is it's going to uh, it's going to convert this to an STL file for us, and you can see there it's opening up SolidWorks to do that. And we have it predefined. We have our predefined settings in there based on what we would typically use, and it's going to put it in a uh, in a folder for us that we've already defined, that we've conf or that we've already configured the task to do. So it's going to fall into this 3D print jobs folder, and when it does that. Uh, it's going to fall into a workflow automatically and then uh, that first transition, there's an automatic transition, the first one is going to kick off a dispatch script and that dispatch script will uh, prompt us to uh, do some more things it's going to rename the file to a standard part numbering scheme that we've set up and uh, it's also going to uh, open the folder for us so We'll give this a minute. Should uh, should be right there. Okay, so it was just sitting there in the background. Final steps is telling us what we need to do. Uh, we need to uh, define some things and then run this through. So as I said, it's going to open up the folder for us. There's the the name. So it gave us the next sequential number, and it took the uh, the description off the card, the original card, and actually put it in there for us. So if I click on this, I am in the defining. Uh, stage here and we can see that there's multiple tabs on this for the 3d print information if we go on the back end here we can see that there's the design part information so that got copied over we have the job status and we can see here that um, you know our information is going to get filled in here when we submit this for printing and here's the uh, the 3d print job information so I'm going to pick which printer I'm going to have this printed on uh, so we'll say there are 3D systems, and you can see here it tells me about uh, what that system is capable of doing. So high precision and durability, form, fit, and function is what it's meant for. And then we have Z-Corp, low-cost, fast, full-color prints, and that's for form and fit. So from here, I can then choose the scale. I would probably want to make this one-to-one, -one, but I did uh, include some options here and you can see that what it does at that point it calculates the print volume and the estimated material cost based off of the volume that we had in there before so it's one to one it's just picking up that value and bringing it over and then we know what the material cost would be and I can give a comment to the uh, the person who's going to be doing the job I can say please print SAP need no later than tomorrow we'll save those values and then we'll check that in and the last step as stated in our in our instructions is to submit for 3D printing if we decided that we didn't want to have this printed we could cancel that as well we'd have a record of that canceled print so submit for printing. This would send a notification over the person, over to the person who would be doing the manufacturing. And when it would be complete, it would come back. Now I just left this so that I can reject it, just so I can demonstrate this. 
but typically it would be a certain user, maybe the, the person responsible for the equipment in the model shop, person who does the jobs to mark 3D print complete. But just before we do that, if we take a look at the job status, we can see that this was filled out. And obviously when it would be sent back, that information would be captured as well. And that's it.